Okay, so in this video, you'll learn how to trade one of my favorite chart patterns, right? It's called the ascending triangle pattern. So let me explain to you, you know, what this pattern is all about and you know why I love this pattern so much. Number one, right? An ascending triangle is pretty much where you see higher lows into resistance. And a descending triangle is the opposite of an ascending triangle. It's where you see lower highs into support. So visually, it looks something like this, right? An ascending triangle. Okay, this is resistance. And you see the price making higher lows into resistance. All right, you can see higher lows coming into resistance. So this is a ascending triangle because you can actually connect the lows over here and it looks something like an ascending triangle. And on the other hand, right, the descending triangle is simply the opposite, right? You see lower highs coming in lower highs coming into support okay so this is an area of support this portion over here and you can see this lower highs coming into support right so this is what an ascending and descending triangle looks like now the thing to note is that the longer the pattern takes to form the more significant it is right and i'll explain why but first right why why does this pattern work and the reason is simple is because stop losses gets triggered. I'll explain. If you look at an ascending triangle, right? Let's redraw this, right? An ascending triangle. Okay. Ask yourself, right? Whenever the price hits resistance, will there be traders looking to short the market? You can be sure there is, right? Because, you know, if you study, you know, technical textbooks, you study, you know, trading courses, the internet, they tell you, you know, when price comes to resistance, you should be short the market and i do agree but only in certain conditions and if conditions like this you see the market testing resistance you know for the third time the fourth time right you don't really want to be short this market anymore why is that two things number one there are a cluster of stop loss right that will get accumulated over time just above this area of resistance right over here. let me change the color let's change this to red right there will be cluster of stop loss right there will be built up above this resistance over time, right? There will be stop loss. Why? Because traders are looking to short this market. So when there is enough stop loss that has been accumulated above resistance, there's a good chance that the market will break out and trigger those stop loss to consume this liquidity. Okay, so that's the first reason. The second reason is this, is number two, right? The first one is stop loss. Number two is that it's a sign of strength, right? When you see the market making higher lows into resistance, what does it tell you? It tells you that the buyers are in control because if they are not in control, they couldn't have possibly, you know, made higher lows into resistance, right? They should make something like, you know, come in, get sell down, come in, get sell down and not, you know, higher lows into resistance that you see over here. So number two is what I call, let's call it strength, right? A sign of strength. So this two reasons, right? Tells you, you know, why ascending triangle, you know, pretty much works in the long run, right? Because there are cluster of stop loss above it and it's a sign of strength when you see this pattern okay so this is why uh ascending and descending triangle pattern work and it's also a good lesson to you that if you see the market testing resistance you know a number of times within a short period right you don't really want to be short resistance anymore because there's a good chance the market will boop, break out higher okay so that's why uh this pattern work so now how do you trade ascending and descending triangle that's the question right so for me, a very simple general rule is this. You look for an ascending triangle in an uptrend and you look for a descending triangle in a downtrend. So basically, you long ascending triangle in an uptrend and you short descending triangle in a downtrend. So let me share with you with a few examples. So this one over here, right? Can you see this? Uh, can you spot this ascending triangle? If you can't, right? Let me help you with it. It's pretty much uh, simple. It's actually this over here. You can see it this area of resistance and you have this higher lows coming into resistance. I mean, oh my goodness, how did I draw that uh, floating circle, right? This is resistance and this is the higher lows coming into resistance. So can you imagine the thought process of a trader who are, you know, unaware of reading price action limiting? Oh, look at this, right? Price is at resistance. I should be short. Right, so they go short. And where would they put their stop loss? Well, the textbook says, right, put your stop loss just above this high over here. So they put their stop loss just above this high. And then, right, with enough traders, you know, uh, shorting the market, there is, you know, a cluster of stop loss built up above this area of resistance, right? And 
Number two, right? This is a sign of strength, right? You can see lower highs coming into resistance. This tells you that buyers are willing to buy at these higher prices. And number three, right? The market breaks out higher. Okay, and on top of it, right? Number three, you have those momentum traders piling into the trade, longing on the breakout. So imagine, right? The order flow that is in your favor. Number one, stop loss getting triggered, right? This becomes a buy order because if you are short and your stops get hit, what does the uh, trade, what is the order of the trade that gets you out of the trade? I mean, that may, sound, that may sound confused, but basically what I'm saying is that if, you're a sh if you are short and your stop loss get hit, right? Your stop loss is basically a buy order to get you out of the market. That's one. Number two, traders want to trade breakout. When they see the market breaking above the highs, they would also go long. So you have these two group of traders going long, which actually, you know, create a huge uh, demand for higher prices, right? The huge buying pressure that is likely to push price higher. So in this case, right, you can see that the market did uh, trade higher. Okay, and uh, now the, I want to walk you through right how you know you can go about setting your stop loss entries and exits. So there are a few ways to do it. There's really no no best way, no perfect way. But for entries, it's very simple. You can either look to go long on the break of the highs, or you can look low. You can look to get long right when the market breaks and close at this level over here. So there's really no right or wrong to this. As for stop loss, right, I typically recommend. Looking at the nearest structure load, nearest swing load, which is this one over here, and give it some buffer and set it, you know, some buffer below it, right? You can use an indicator like the average true range, set it one ATR below it, right? Just basically, you want to give it some buffer from the lows. Why do you want to give some buffer? Is because you don't want the market, you know, to come down, spike you up, and then continue trading higher. So give it some buffer, right? Give your stops more room to breathe, to say. And on top of it, right, the reason why you want to put it down there is because if you know how a ascending triangle pattern looks like, it looks something like this, right? So if the market you know, breaks and close below this uh, so-called upward trend line, chances are this pattern is invalidated and you don't want to stay in this trade any longer. Okay, so this is how you can go about with your entries and your stop loss. Now, what about your take profit, right? Uh, again, there are two ways you can go about it. For take profit, the first thing that you can do if you want to have a fixed target, right, for this, you can actually measure the move from here, this high to this low, right? So let's say, for example, uh, let's put it as, say, 100 pips, right? So what you can do is that you can project this uh, 100 pips, right, from this breakout level, from the breakout level where resistance, you go up another 100 pips, right? And over here will be your take profit level. So you basically copy this portion over here, the distance that the price has moved, and you then pace up above here. So if this has moved 100 pips and the market has moved up another 100 pips from the breakout level, all right, another 100 pips, then this level over here is basically your take profit level, right? That's one way you can go about in uh, exiting your winning trade. An alternative approach, right, that you can do if you want to, you know, trail your stops, trail your winner, is you can use a, a moving average, right? So, for example, you can use a 20-period moving average. Oops, sorry, this is the 50. The 20-period moving average, this red line over here, and you can trail your trade, right, as the market trades higher, and you only exit if it closes below it. So, in this instance, right, you can see that the market has actually closed below the 20 MA over here and you would exit this trade. So again, whether you want to use 20 or 50, it's uh, there's no right or wrong. 20 would keep you in with the shorter term trend. The 50 would keep you in with the uh, medium term trend. So it really depends, right, on how how long or how short of a trend that you want to you wanna write. Okay, so this is uh, one example. So here's another example. Can you spot the ascending triangle pattern, right? Give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, this one over here, this resistance, and then you have higher lows coming into this resistance, right? Higher lows. Again, why does this work, right? If you if you if you skip to this portion of the video, you don't know know why this pattern works. Can refer back to the early portion and and uh, check it out. So anyway, this pattern in this case, right? You can see that this market pretty much is a losing trade, right? You can see that this market basically got you into the trade. You long the breakout, and it pretty much collapsed. After which you got stopped lot. You got stopped out, right? And I. I the reason why I share with you winning and losing trades is because I want to paint to you uh, the real reality of trading, right? Nothing I share, nothing I share on my YouTube, my blog, website or anything is 100%. It's all dealing with probabilities, right? So always, always manage your expectations that there will be winners and there will be losers. And finally, another example I want to share, right? This time, this is the opposite. It's a descending triangle in a downtrend. Can you spot it? I will give you five seconds. One to five. Okay. It's actually here. Right? This is the highs, lower highs coming into support. Okay? So again, how could you have, you know, traded this pattern? 
you can look to place a sell stop order just below the lows, right? Or wait for the market to break and close below this support before you get short. Again, right? Stop loss, you want to reference from the nearest swing high. So which is this? Give it some buffer somewhere about here, right? Your stop loss should be somewhere about here because if the market can break and close above this uh, downward trend line, chances are this pattern is invalidated and you don't want to stay in the trade any longer. Now, the third question is, you know, where do you set your target, right? Again, I, I mentioned that there are two ways. Number one, take the distance from this high to this low. This is a classical charting principles. So if let's say the distance here is say 500 pips, for example, just project down 500 pips from this support and your target will be somewhere here, right? So in this case, you may or may not get filled on your target. I think possibly not about 80% 80 80 there before the market reverse higher. Okay, so and the other second approach to, to trail your stop loss, as I mentioned, is to use a moving average like the 20 or the 50, whichever, uh, depending on the type of trend that you want to capture. So in this case, right, you would have probably exit this trade somewhere here. Okay, so this, this pattern, right, if you, you know, let your winners run, right, there will be winners, I mean, small winners, small losses, right, but there will be a few times, right, possibly, you know, one in 10 trades where you catch a, a big move where the market just keep trending over a long period of time. And that's where, you know, this chart pattern could really, you know, yield you some really nice risk to reward on your trades. Okay, so this is the ascending and descending triangle pattern for you. So let's do a quick recap. Okay, so an ascending triangle is basically higher lows into resistance and the descending triangle is lower highs into support. The reason why this pattern works is because there is order flow at the other end of the market structure, right? Like, you know, say for example, ascending triangle, there is just traders putting their stops above resistance and if the market hits those stops, right, the uh, stops will get triggered and on top of it, you have, you know, breakout traders looking to get long. These two group of traders will create a uh, huge buying pressure that leads to higher prices, Right? If you want to trade this pattern, trade with the trend for better odds, right? After all, the trend is your friend. And then we discuss about entries, stops, and exits, right? How to, you know, enter the trade, where to put your stop loss. Okay, let's do a quick recap because I think this one is important for most of you. So entries, I mentioned that it's quite straightforward. You can either, you know, look too long on the break of the highs or you can wait for a close after the market breaks out of resistance. For stop loss, right, I typically reference from the nearest swing low and give it some buffer, set it slightly below it over here because you want to exit your trade when this pattern is invalidated. So when is this pattern invalidated? It's when this upward trend line, right, gets broken. So the pattern is invalidated. As for exits, I mentioned that you can use a, you can use a number one, right, a price projection, let's call it PP, right, price projection uh, using, you know, if the calculate the distance from the highs to the lows, right, and then project it up, uh, project it up from your, entry price and this is where you could consider taking your profits right your target profit and um, the other technique i share with you is you can use moving average like the 20 or the 50 to trail it using a moving average okay so with that said if you've enjoyed right this video so far what i recommend you to do right now is to go down to my website tradingwithrainer.com i'll put the link below but for those of you who want to know what's the link it's over here tradingwithrainer.com and i'll put it below this video as well and then scroll down right to this portion here and you'll see two trading guides go and download them right because it will complement whatever you have just learned today right the ultimate guide to trend following and the ultimate guide to price action trading right it's completely free so just go and download them right and you'll pretty much, you know, get a clearer picture to how I trade the markets. For the price action guide, you'll learn how to better time your entries and exits, right? And learn how to read the price section of the market, what the market is telling you. For the trend following guide, you'll learn how to write massive trends in the market, right? So you can write, you know, uptrend and downtrend, and even, you know, when the market or the stock market is in a recession. So completely free, right? I'll suggest you go down and download two, these two trading guides and I'll send it to your email. So with that said, I wish you good luck and good trading, right? If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, right? Subscribe to this uh, channel as well, so you'll always be updated. And any questions for me, just let me know below and I'll get back to you. So with that said, I'll talk to you soon.